Hello, first graders, and welcome back to our read aloud for Junie B. Jones Shipwrecked. Today, we are going to read the last two chapters, uh, 9 and 10, to finish our story. Uh, last time we read, they were practicing for their play, and Junie and May got in kind of an argument during the rehearsal, and Mr. Scary made them both go sit out. No fun at all. But let's start reading on chapter 9, which is called Shipwrecked. Dear First Grade Journal, Tonight is parents' night, and good news, Roger came back to school today, only now he has a bit of a cold. Only, who even cares? Cause yay, he's going to be land. We practiced our play three more times today. It went very good, except for Sheldon doesn't want to sail to... Uh, Sheldon doesn't want to sail to Jeremy Roger. Plus, Mail kept, May kept on hogging the whole entire ocean blue from Junie B, first grader. As soon as I finished writing, the bell rang to go home. I quick put away my journal, and I skipped out of room one, very gleeful. Only, ha, that night after I had dinner, mother and daddy drove me right back there, and I skipped back in again. And guess what? There were parents snooping everywhere. They were snooping at our bulletin boards, and snooping in our desks, and they were even snooping in our test papers. All the children had tension in us. Cause every test can't be a gem, you know. Then finally, Mr. Scary saved the day. He clapped his loud hands together, and he said it was time for the play. Then, woo! All of us got relief on our faces, and we hurried to the auditorium as fast as we could go. And we quick put on our costumes. I tapped on Sheldon very giggly. My stomach has butterflies in it, I said. Does yours, Sheldon? Does your stomach have butterflies in it? Just then, Roger sneezed real loud near Sheldon's ear. Sheldon made a sick face. Then he quick held his nose and nostrils again, and he whispered the word, Jeremy boy. Pretty soon, Mr. Scary made the shush sign, and he smiled at us in our costumes. Okay, people, it's showtime, he whispered, very excited. He did a happy thumbs up. And we did a happy thumbs up back. Then, very slow, Mr. Scary opened the, cur opened the curtains and our Columbus play began. Lucille and Jose walked to the middle of the stage. Hello, sailor. My name is Richie Queen Isabel, said Lucille. Jose did a bow. Hola, Queen Isabella. My name is Cristobal Colon, and I would like to look for a new trade route to China. Can I please have some money to sail the ocean blue? Lucille reached into her purse. Okay, here's some money, she said, but please bring back the change. After that, Jose bowed to Lucille again, and Lucille curtsied to Jose, and they walked off the stage. The sailors hurried to their places. My heart pounded and pounded inside me. On account of after the sailors came, the ships. Mr. Scary lined up to go on stage, or lined us up to go on stage. Good luck, you three, he whispered. Then, wowie, wow, wow, it was time. I swallowed very hard, then me and May and Sheldon sailed right out onto the stage, and we started to say our lines. I am the Pinta, and I am the fastest ship, I said. I am the Santa Maria, and I'm the biggest ship, said May. Then Sheldon started to say his line too, only too bad for him, because just then Roger did another loud sneeze, and you could hear it everywhere. Sheldon crunched his face very disgusted and looked back at him. I am the Nina, and Roger should wash his hands, he said. Me and May looked surprised at that line, but Mr. Scary whispered to keep on going. Jose walked out and his next or Jose walked out and said his next words. Ah, three fine ships, just what I need to sail the ocean blue. Today we will begin our journey. After that, Shirley walked out with a big sign. It said, Okay, now it's tomorrow. The audience did a little chuckle, only I don't know why. Then Camille and Chenille stretched their ocean waves across the floor. And hooray, hooray, all of us ships began to sail to Roger. There was a curvy line on the floor for us, for our, of the stage for us to follow. We were supposed to sail side by side very perfect, only just as I thought. Pretty soon, May tried to squeeze in front of me, and that was just plain wrong. On account of the Santa Maria was not the fastest ship, and you can't change history. That is how come I had to speed up a teensy bit. Only, too bad for me, because when I speeded up, I accidentally nudged May's ship in her side, and then BAM! She nudged me back, hard, 
and uh, and on purpose I mean and crash the pinta fell right off my shoulders and I tripped over my ship and I fell right smack on the floor and here are the three ships crashing into the ground because May and Junie B were trying to have a race then oh no oh no May tripped over my feet and she fell right down on top of me and so Sheldon almost fell too only he quick did a swervy and he landed into the land instead then kaboom both of them fell onto the floor across from us and that's when the worstest thing of all happened because all of a sudden ah uh, ah uh, Achoo! Roger sneezed right in Sheldon's face, and it went right directly up his nostrils. Ah! yelled Sheldon. Then he quick tried to get up, but he just kept falling down again. And so Mr. Scary rushed onto the stage, and he stood Sheldon up on his feet. Only more bad news, because Sheldon pulled away from him, and then vroom! Fast as a race car, he sailed straight back to Spain, and down the steps, and off the stage, and right out of the auditorium. I did a gasp that night. Then I sat there sickish and frozen, and May sat sickish and frozen too. Because now Columbus would never get to America, and it was all our fault. Chapter 10 is called Surprise. It was the terriblest moment of my life. I looked at the side of the stage... All the children had shock on their faces, plus Mr. Scary had shock on his face too. He quick hurried over to close the stage curtain. Only that's when a miracle happened, because just at the exact same minute, Jose hollered, Wait! Then, zippity fast, he jumped right into the ocean, and Christopher Columbus swam to America. He did, he did, he really did. He swam like the wind, I tell you, and he landed right on Roger. And all of the audience clapped and clapped. Because Columbus got to America after all. And that is not all the happy news either. Because the play was last night. And so today Mr. Scary brought a delicious cake to school. And we were, we were going to have a yay Jose party. Only there was still one teensy problem. On account of some of the children aren't actually speaking to me in May because of what happened at the play. And so lucky for me that my bestest friend named Herbert got back from the virus today. Because he already helped me write Apology to Room 1. I'm going to read it after we have cake, on account of children are, st are in better moods after they have sugar in them. Here are the words I wrote to say. Dear Room 1, except for not actually May. I am sorry I fell down at the play. I am going to take all of the blame for what happened. Because that will be big of me, I think. And so I am not going to mention about how I got rammed in the side by another ship, real hard I mean, like an iceberg. Thank you for not being mad at me. You are a delightful bunch. Your friend, Junie B, first grader. P.S. In the next play, I will be a mouse, on account of ships can sink, but mice just float usually. And so a mouse play is still the way to go, I think. And then there's a picture of a little mouse that she drew. And that, my friends, is the end of Junie B. Shipwrecked. I'm going to look through my books to find another book to start reading tomorrow. I wonder what it will be, but I'm so glad you could listen to this book with me. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.